that you are with us. We thank you for your victory uh, for every one of us. And uh, uh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who bring the truth and the word of Jesus to our mind and to strengthen us, to help us to walk in your truth. So Father, we just pray that uh, you give us the listening ears and help us to know what you are speaking to us today. And uh, Father, we honor your word and uh, help us to be not just hearer of the word, but also the doer of your word. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, today, the title of my message is The Tree of Life. The Tree of Life. And uh, for me, wherever there are trees, I will be happy. So, you know, it's easy to make me happy as long as uh, I can be around trees. And trees, is so, trees are so pleasant. It brings forth the fruit and also uh, it uh, provides shades and uh, fresh air. So trees uh, really uh, gives life, and uh, and for a tree of life, uh, that's uh, even more life giving. And we know that uh, in the beginning of the Bible, uh, in the Garden of Eden, there is this tree of life. And then uh, in the Book of Revelation, there are trees of life, which is which are along the river of life. And the leaves are healing to the nations and also bears fruit every month. So we know uh, the Bible talks about the tree of life. But what is the tree of life? Uh, we know that uh, uh, even when Adam and Eve they committed uh, sin, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden so that they would not be able to approach the tree of life and be uh, uh, sinful for eternity. So we know that the tree of life uh, really gives eternal life. So today, uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, the book of John, chapter 15, to see what the real tree of life is. Okay? So, last, uh, last time, I talked about uh, John, chapter 14. So in John, chapter 14, that was the beginning of uh, the account of the Lord's Supper. And then if you count it, uh, you'll find uh, chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17. Four chapters were given to uh, the Lord's Supper, to the account of the Lord's Supper. So for John, out of 21 chapters, almost 20% of his book was about the Lord's Supper. So uh, that tells us how significant it is to Apostle John that uh, uh, Jesus gave his last talk to the Apostles. But if you look at the four chapters of uh, Jesus' talk, you will, uh, it would not be difficult for you to find out what the theme was. <coughs> Actually, there is only one single theme to uh, uh, Jesus' talk. Do the, is anybody who knows what the theme of the Last Supper? Anybody knows that? Anybody? Huh? Come on, louder, they are. <laughs> no, you're eating, okay. <laughs> well, I expose you. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so uh, the theme is actually quite simple. Jesus said that you are to love each other as I love you. And uh, especially, not just love, but also to bring about unity. So we see that Jesus, uh, at, the last, at the Last Supper, He wants to make sure one thing can happen up, among the Apostles. That is, there will be unity. And they will love each other. Uh, so chapter 15 is also along the same theme, the same line. I just want to give you a background. Of chapter 15 and uh, I'm going to read to you uh, chapter 15 from verse 1 uh, to verse uh, 13 oh, no, to verse 15 I am Jesus said I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away 
and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that he may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you, are ab if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask whatever you wish and you will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So here we see in verse uh, 12, we stop here, that Jesus made it very clear that when he asked his disciples to continue to abide in him, he said, you are to love each other. If you love one another, if you are united with one another, then you will be abiding in my love and your joy will make full. Not only that, but also Jesus promised that whatever you ask, it shall be given to you. So, when we love each other, there is so much benefits to it. When we love each other in unity, we abide in Jesus, we abide in His love, and He abides in us. And also, we will be full of joy, and the joy uh, will be complete. Uh, so I want you to think of, uh, you know, just uh, an experience of being full of joy. I believe that most of your experience, full, uh, being full of joy, associated with uh, being loved by someone, or giving love to someone. So we know, for us, the greatest joy is to uh, experience love or to give love, okay? And now, let's look, at, look back at uh, uh, this passage and just uh, see what uh, Jesus was uh, talking about mainly. Here, Jesus uh, said that in this parable of uh, the true vine and the branch, there are three major characters. So the first one is the true vine, which is Jesus, okay? And then the second one is the Father, uh, who is the vine dresser, or you can call him gardener, okay? And then uh, the third one is the branch. So the branch is uh, referring to you and me, okay? So for everybody, you can either be a branch abiding in the vine, or you can be uh, cut off and dry up on the ground and eventually be burned. Okay? So it's very obvious that there are two choices you can pick. Which one do you want? Do you want to abide in the vine? And then uh, you, know, you, can, you can be pruned so that you can be fruitful. And the other one is that you are cut off and then you dry it up. And eventually being burned. Uh, so, of course, everybody would choose to abide in Christ. And then, uh, Jesus said, uh, we are to abide in Him, and uh, we are to bear uh, fruit. Uh, and then, uh, here it says, that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Uh, you may be very talented, you may be very smart, but if you don't abide in Him, if you don't draw your life and strength and your love from Jesus, you would not be able to do anything. So we know that Jesus is truly the fountain 
of uh, life and also our strength. And uh, uh, I want to uh, also uh, draw your, your attention to one thing, that is uh, the reason Jesus is giving this, uh, uh, this part of the talk to the disciples was because uh, he was about to leave the disciples. Just imagine that they have spent time with each other day and night for how many years? By now, three and a half years. Just imagine that you, you, know, you live with somebody, you laugh and cry together, you work hard, uh, endure the hardship, and uh, enjoy life together for three and a half years. And all of a sudden, Jesus was about to leave them. So Jesus knew that if, you know, how shocking it could be if they found out that Jesus is going to die. So Jesus wants to assure them, hey, don't worry, don't you worry about it. Because when I am on, on the cross, actually, although my body may be absent, but my spirit will be with you. And furthermore, you can even abide in me always, wherever. Before, when Jesus was uh, uh, still alive on the earth, you know, maybe disciples will go out to buy some food, so they are not in Jesus' presence. But after Jesus died on the cross and resurrected, the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Jesus, can be with the disciples wherever they go and every minute. So Jesus was assuring them that although my body is gone, but you can always abide in me. So I think uh, the purpose of this talk uh, is mainly to assure them that uh, you know, as you abide in me, you'll always be in my presence. When I was uh, uh, you know, meditating and studying, in the, studying this chapter, uh, I thought of several pictures of uh, abiding in Christ. So today I'm going to present to you four pictures I had from this chapter. So the first picture is a picture of the tree of life. Jesus said, I am the true vine and you are the branch. So we know that the vine is also a tree. Okay, so whoever is connected to the true vine has eternal life. So who is the, so what is the tree of life? Who is the tree of life? Jesus himself is the tree of life. The true vine speaks of the tree of life. Okay. So if you are connected to Jesus, you will always draw life from him. Uh, and Jesus uh, actually promised that uh, if, you, uh, have, uh, if you believe in me, you will have living water out of your innermost being. Uh, so we know that actually Jesus is the tree of life. Okay, uh, when we look at the, even the cross, we know the cross is made of uh, dead wood. Okay. But when Jesus was hung on the cross, he actually took away all of our sins and death. And like uh, the song we just sang, he has conquered death. Uh, so it is uh, uh, actually turned to be the fountain of life. So we see that the uh, the dead wood, the dead cross, has uh, turned to be the tree of life. If, because if anybody believes in the, uh, the gospel of, the, of Jesus' crucifixion, will have eternal life. And uh, yesterday, late at night, uh, when I was emailing uh, my friends uh, in North Carolina, because uh, I was going to visit them, and uh, this time his friends uh, uh, just uh, forwarded me an email, which uh, was devastating to me. So it, was, it wasn't fun in the middle, you know, it was uh, uh, close to be midnight when I got the email. I, I saw the bad news, which is uh, uh, a sister in the Lord, whom we have known for 30 years, uh, was uh, diagnosed to have uh, terminal cancer. And, uh, so we, we have known her for a long time, although we've been apart for 
uh, pretty far away. But when I later time when I saw that, I was uh, I felt devastated. But uh, like uh, the song declares that He has conquered death. So um, God has given uh, her eternal life. So she's going to be resurrected either now or when Jesus comes. So uh, Jesus has conquered death. We can have uh, uh, the hope of eternal life and also the assurance of uh, our salvation. Okay. And then, uh, so when we see that uh, uh, as we are connected to the true life, then we are connected to the tree of life and then we can have uh, true life. But uh, I also want to remind you of a reality. That is, uh, a lot of people, they seem to be connected to the true mind. Seems, seems to be, uh, you know, a good Christian. Uh, comes to the church uh, regularly and give tithes and pray and all that things. But, uh, you can be doing all that but still dry inside. Okay. Why? Why would that happen? Uh, so I just want to give you a, a picture. Okay, a PowerPoint. Okay, next one. Yes. Uh, so, this. okay, next one. Okay, so here's the picture. Uh, this is not a biology class, but I want to give you a very uh, clear picture of what being, how being connected to the true vine internally is. Okay, so we see that. Uh, you know, if you have a cross section of uh, the, the vine, and then you will find something on the left, you'll see, uh, you know, what's inside is the, you know, a lot of uh, tubules, uh, which is microscopic, and these tubules are connected throughout the whole plant, and uh, of course it's uh, like our blood vessel, so it transports the nutrients and water, minerals, and also. Um, uh, bring the waste and toxin away. So uh, it's, it's just pretty much like our blood vessel. So we have uh, uh, one of them is called uh, uh, phloem, the other one is called xylem. Uh, do you remember those terms? Okay, so um, when we, okay, so let's look at the next one. Okay, so um, we know that. Uh, Let's go back to the, the, the previous one. The previous one. Okay. So we see that. Uh, no. Next one. Okay, this one. <coughs> so the flow end uh, will transport the nutrients, which is the uh, glucose. Okay. And the xylem will transport the water and minerals, and also bring the waste away. Okay. So we see that both the branch and the vine have these uh, tubules, and then the tubules of these two need to be connected, okay? And then, not only connected, but also there need to be exchange. In other words, water need to go back and forth from the vine to the branch. Uh, but if something, if they're not connected or something blocks the tubule, then uh, the water or the nutrients cannot exchange between the branch and also the vine. Okay, so uh, this is also a picture of the spiritual uh, situation. Next one. So we have a spiritual uh, flow M. A spiritual flow M uh, would uh, uh, transport the word of God to bring the spiritual food. In other words, uh, it's not good enough that you are externally connected to Jesus, meaning just coming to the church or you know, doing the forms. But internally, you need to be receiving the word of God constantly, every day. Just like you need to eat every day. Spiritually, you need to eat every day. So uh, the word of God is our spiritual nutrients. And then, we also need uh, the spiritual Zion, uh, which uh, is the, uh, the living water taking away waste and toxin and giving us life. Okay. And uh, it's important 
that we allow the Holy Spirit to take away toxin and waste in our life. Do you have toxin and waste in your life, in your mind, in your emotions? Yes, of course. It's you don't you know you don't have to try to hide it because everybody has uh, you know a spiritual waste or toxin. And then uh, if you do not allow the Holy Spirit to take them away, it will tox it will poison you and will bring uh, bring about death eventually. Uh, so it's very important that we open up totally to the Holy Spirit in our prayer, in our devotional time, and confess to God what's inside of us. So a lot of times I find myself in my morning devotion, opening up myself to the Lord, and I, I said, you know, God, I, I you know, open wide myself to you, you know, because I know there's no need to hide from Him. God is there to help. He's there, he's here to help us. So uh, he can help us uh, to the degree we open up to him. Okay? So I want to be as open as I can so that he can help me as much as he wants to. And I would just uh, say, God, there, is, uh, there might be, uh, there are always lies and accusation or condemnation from the enemies. We know that uh, it's very difficult for us to see the whole truth. We, because we are so limited, so we can all we can see only partial truth. And then, if you take the partial truth to be the whole picture, then you can be very wrong, because you jump to the wrong conclusion, and then you can be deceived. So we should be so proud to say, "Oh, you know, what I I always see the truth, and what what I judge is always right." That's very wrong. So I would just pray to God. God, take away. My, you know, criticism, condemnation, accusation, and lies. And also, if there's, and also sometimes there could be pride, there could be rebellion. Some, sometimes I struggle with bitterness and forgiveness. And uh, uh, sometimes there can be fear, anxieties, and worries. And uh, uh, just maybe lust of greed and all that kind of things in our life. And don't hesitate to confess it before the Lord as the Holy Spirit uh, enlightens you. Because when the Holy Spirit enlightens these things to you, He's you know, He is trying to help you. And then you can just open up and give it to the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit can take it away from you. And then you can be free from all these toxic, spiritual toxins in your life. How many of you want to be free and healthy? Yes, so you need to open up your heart and allow the Holy Spirit, the living water, to take away all the toxin, all the waste in, the, in your life. Okay, so um, we don't want to be just externally connected to Christ, but more importantly, it in, uh, internally connected to Christ through uh, the exchange of our uh, its internal uh, conditions with the Lord. So, um, is, are you dry spiritually? If you are, maybe, that's because uh, you haven't established your daily devotion to receive His Word and also give your problems to Him. Okay, so the first picture we had from abiding in Jesus is uh, the tree of life. Jesus is our tree of life. And the second picture we have of abiding in Christ is the picture of unity. Okay. So I don't think anybody would say, oh, the branch of the tree do not belong to the tree. All the tree has nothing to do with the branch. When we see the tree, we see the branch and the, and the trunk and the rest of the tree together as one. Okay. So uh, as we are connected to uh, Jesus as a branch. That's a picture of unity. We find our identity as we are united with Christ. And uh, we, are some, we are children of the Father, of God, is simply because we join with Christ. 
we can have inheritance as children of God is simply because we are united with Christ. Our sin, our forgiveness, is because we are united with Christ. And we are blessed for the same reason. So we need to know that you are united with Christ. Okay, so there is a picture of unity. And uh, uh, as you are uh, a branch of Jesus, you abide in Jesus, that means you belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to you. You are no longer a lost, lonely, dry, and useless dry branch apart from the tree. Okay, and then uh, uh, here we see that uh, unity with Christ is together with other saints. Unity with Christ is uh, along with other saints. Uh, some, Christian, some people say, oh, you know, I don't have to go to the church, I can just worship God before the TV. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm as well as, um, you know, being connected with Jesus. But when you think of uh, uh, this finger, okay, which is like a branch to the body of Jesus, okay, so, just imagine, uh, so th this, this finger is connected to the body, and through the body is connected to the head, which is Jesus, okay? What if you see the finger directly attached to the head, like this? That would be an awful picture, right? So we know that uh, we are not connected to uh, Jesus just uh, by ourselves. We are connected to Jesus with other saints. That's the picture of unity. And um, we have a prayer network uh, with other pastors uh, in Taipei. And uh, recently I, I heard that uh, there was a pastor, you know, seemed to, you know, a little bit worn out, things like that. And then uh, uh, she asked us to pray that, uh, you know, there will be unity in the the core team. And uh, so I have been in ministry for almost 20 years, and I have seen churches uh, all over the world. And I know one thing for sure, that is, if any church plan is going to work, there needs to be unity in the core team. Mm -hmm. If there is unity in the core team, and it provides uh, a strong foundation for the church to, uh, to thrive and to be healthy. Uh, so really, it doesn't matter how many people you have uh, in the beginning, but it really what matters is do you have a core team that are really in unity and loving each other, and they do life together. Uh, so it's very important. And not just in the church, but also in the family. If the parents uh, really have a strong love and unity with each other, they can agree with each other about many things, uh, in terms of parenting or you know doing the uh, doing the family together, then you know uh, the the children can be healthy and can develop very well. But if the parents uh, they disagree about a lot of things or they just doing their own things, and there's not there's not too much unity, then um, and with that kind of situation, the children will be hard to grow healthily. So in the, in the family, that's the same. And also at work, if uh, you know uh, the team uh, didn't like each other, they don't see each other eye to eye, they can uh, struggle with each other, and they, I mean, out of this struggle, they drain each other uh, energy. So it's in, we see that uh, unity is really uh, not just uh, something we can enjoy, but also unity brings about power and brings about fruitfulness. So it's very important that uh, there is unity. And I remember uh, just about maybe actually 21 years ago before uh, we were sent to the mission field. Uh, God just led uh, as a whole and myself uh, in a very special thing which uh, I really appreciate. Uh, that was uh, uh, for s uh, several months, uh, we would uh, wake up early in the morning, and 5:30 we would be already out in the camp in the university campus, which is 
next to our arm and we'll be praying and walking together for one and a half hours for several months. And uh, today when I look back, uh, I would say out of this kind of uh, unity, we were able to birth our mission work in China. Uh, so it's, in, it's important that uh, we work on the unity. Once we have the unity, then there will be anointing, there will be power, and there will be breakthrough, there will be revival, there will be life, there will be fruitfulness. And then, okay, so the second picture we have out of abiding in Jesus is the picture of unity. The third one is the picture of sanctification. Uh, we look at the uh, verse 2 of chapter 15. It says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Uh, so who is the he here? The Father. Okay. So the Father would uh, look at the branch, and then uh, it's, it's, uh, there's no fruit. And then the Father would just uh, take away. Take away the branch. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. So even if you are pleasing before him, you, you do everything right, okay? But you still need to go through pruning. So everybody is okay to be pruned by the Father, which means uh, being disciplined by the Father. Number one, the Bible says, when you are being disciplined, that means God loves you. He is your father, and uh, he has to discipline you. Uh, so it's actually good. Uh, so you can can you tell your neighbor it's okay to be pruned by the father? Amen. It's okay to be pruned by the father, so that you can be more fruitful. Amen. Okay. So this is a picture of sanctification. And uh, if you still, if you can recall the victory weekend, we said that uh, in our walk with Jesus, there are two things, two goals in our Christian life. The first one is uh, sanctification. We want to be more like Jesus. So what is sanctification? Sanctification means you get better and better, and eventually when you see Jesus, you are like him. So it's Christ-likeness. Sanctification is Christ-likeness. And the second one is you want to be fruitful. So every Christian, every day, you want to have two goals. Number one, sanctification. Number two, is being fruitful. Okay? So sanctification. How can you be sanctified? There are three things we need to have to be sanctified. Number one, it's the word of God. Jesus said, by the word I spoke to you, you are clean. So the Father uses the Bible in whatever context to prove you. Okay? So when you, for example, you know, in the morning devotion, you read this passage, oh, he said, wow, it really speaks to me. Because the Bible is like a mirror. Every morning when you wake up, you look at the mirror and you say, oh, my hair is messed up here. Oh, and then uh, my beard, you know, it's not right, so you, you shave. You know, so you know, the Bible is like that. So when you look at the Bible, the Word tells you, what, you know, if there's anything wrong with you. And then you can, uh, uh, you, you can fix it, allow the, uh, the Word of God to fix you. So the first one, we need, we need to have a uh, presentation is the Word of God. And the second one is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We know that in your Christian walk, you always need two wings to fly with God. The first one is the Word of God. The second one is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah, so uh, you need the Word. You need the power. Okay? And uh, so... The second thing for sanctification is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between condemnation and conviction. Condemnation is from the enemy or from your flesh. And it puts you down, it doesn't give you hope. But conviction is the opposite, it's from the Holy Spirit. It reminds you 
you know, what are what the things you may be doing wrong. So the Holy Spirit inside of you would warn you about the wrong direction you may be heading. So in other words, it, it, it's almost like a break, okay? Sometimes you, you are about to jump into that, but inside of you there is a still small voice telling you, no, stop, think about it, calm down. Uh, or even it tells you, hey, don't you think that's a little bit, there is a little bit of pride. Don't you think that the enemy is trying to seduce you into something? Okay, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's very gentle, it doesn't put you down, but it causes you to be awake. Okay, so that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You don't want condemnation because there is no more condemnation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. No more. Amen. Yeah, that's right. So whenever you feel condemned, you feel like there's an accusation being put down, you know, you feel like judged, you know, that's not from the Holy Spirit. And you want to say no. Yes. Because it's not from it's not in line with the word of God. But if there is a gentle reminding inside of you, if there is a check inside of you, in your spirit, then you know you really need to listen to it, okay? So before you say that word, uh, you need to hold your tongue back and not allow the enemy to take advantage of your weakness. Okay, so to be sanctified, you need the word of God, you need the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know? And then finally, you need to repent. You need to repent. And I, I say the re we need to have repentance as our lifestyle. Repentance is not shameful. It is not shameful. It is God's grace. You get it? Yes. Repentance is not shameful. It is God's grace. Okay? Because you know, when whenever the Holy Spirit convicts you, he always has a solution for you. He doesn't convict you without giving you the way out. He knows the way out, so he convicts you. So you want to, whenever there's conviction, you want to repent. You want to hold, you want to turn back to the Lord as soon as possible. So sometimes you may like, oh, it's so hard. It's so hard not to be you know, in fear, it's so hard not to worry, it's so hard not to be mad, uh, it's so hard to forgive people. Uh, but, if you can train yourself to just do it, whenever, there, whenever the Holy Spirit convicts you, then you save yourself a lot of heartache. Amen? Okay, so, repentance. And then for a person to be uh, ready to repent, you need to have two kinds of mentality. The first mentality is teachable part. The second one is the ability uh, of self-examination. It's so important to have a teachable heart. And every time in a Christian leadership training, we say, you want to look for People, if you want to raise up a leader, you want to look for people who has F-A-T. It's not fat, okay? It's not fat. It's, uh, F stands for faithful, A stands for available, and T stands for teachable. Okay? You want to look for people who are faithful, available, and teachable so that you can invest your life into them to raise them up as leaders. If they're not teachable, if they're too proud, they will not take your word. You're wasting your time. Why do you want to invest your life and time into people who would resist whatever you have to give them? So it's important. We need to be teachable. And you know, Jesus, God is raising you up to be a leader. You know that. Tell your neighbor, God is raising you up as a servant leader. He's raising you up as a servant leader. So you have to have a teachable heart before the Lord. 
Okay? And then self, the ability of self-examination. What is self-examination? You don't want to just uh, scrutinize yourself all the time and uh, you know, just uh, find fault with yourself. That's not what we're talking about. Self-examination is that you would just uh, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see if there is any uh, you know, if there is any fault, any uh, wrong direction you are going, but just look back the day, you want you want to, uh, or just look at look back the whole year and see if there's anything that uh, you have uh, not uh, be in the right heart or said the right words, and uh, so uh, there is there is a, a famous Chinese saying. Which is by a, a student of uh, Confucius. Uh, he says that every day I examine myself three times. I think we can learn from this uh, person, okay? And uh, we don't we don't have to do that, you know, three times necessarily. But whenever the Holy Spirit is convicting you, you need to, you know, you need to be able to see what is revealing to you about your life. If, uh, if there's any wrong motives, you need to change, you need to change, okay? And uh, when I look at some people who do not, some people actually uh, lack the ability to examine their own heart. And uh, normally it's because of uh, self-defense or pride or both. When something goes wrong, when people cannot examine themselves, do you know what they would do? They would blame everything outside. But you blame the environment, blame other people, blame God. It is never their fault. Okay? Do you think these kind of people can grow and learn? Do you think they can be healthy? Because they cannot see the truth. They cannot fix their problems. And uh, they just uh, have so much uh, self-defense in their mind. So we want to make sure that uh, we are open uh, to self-examination in the Holy Spirit. And the last picture of abiding in Christ is uh, fruitfulness. The picture of fruitfulness. We saw the picture of the tree of life. We saw the picture of unity. The picture of sanctification. Now we see the picture of fruitfulness. We see that uh, uh, from the verse we just read, verse 2, it says that the Father will prune the branch so that it can be fruitful. So we know that there's one thing God does in your life, work in your life. You always want to make sure you can be fruitful. Your lives. You want to make sure the church can be fruitful. You want to make sure this kingdom can make an impact in the world. That's our Father's desire. That's uh, His goal uh, in our lives. Okay? And then, uh, uh, we see that Jesus uh, urges His disciples to be fruitful in the following areas. Number one, uh, to uh, love each other. Loving each other. Number two, to be witness for Christ. We want to be fruitful in our witnessing for Jesus. And then uh, number three, we want to be fruitful in making disciples. So that's why he has a great mission for us to make disciples of all nations. And finally, he want, to be fruit, want us to be fruitful to change the world. As our lives are changed by God, Jesus can use our life to change the world. Do you know that? That's the spiritual principle. Let me say this again. As our lives is being changed by Jesus, he can use our life to change the world. So every changed life will bring about changing the world. 
around this person. Okay, so if you want to change the world, you need to be changed you know, first. You need to be changed yourself first. Okay, and uh, I just want to give you a recent uh, uh, testimony of how a Christian can be fruitful. I know that you all have uh, experienced this before, and I just want to give you a fresh uh, out of out of, out of ex a story with you to encourage you. Uh, just uh, two, Sunday, two Sundays ago, uh, there was a baptism uh, in the Chinese service. And uh, this uh, lady, Ya Song, uh, was, bat uh, was baptized. And then, uh, not only at the baptism service, she, she gave her testimonies, but also, uh, she, uh, four days later, when she was uh, in her shop, uh, by the way, her shop is uh, in one of in one in the uh, in the alleys. It's called the uh, how was the name? Jack's. Jack Mountains. Huh? Jack Mountains. Jack Mountains. Okay. Okay. So it's a hiking store, hiking gear store. And then uh, uh, she uh, on Thursday, four days after she, on her baptism, she's uh, uh, she has uh, she had. Uh, a customer uh, who's also a longtime friend, uh, and then uh, this person came over and they chat and talked about the problem he's been facing, and he realized they really need to uh, see God. Uh, and then uh, Ya Song just share her baptism and her story, her testimony to this person, and say, "Hey, tomorrow Friday we're gonna have our uh, small group meeting for the first time. So would you like to join us?" And this person happened to be Samuel and Daniel's teacher in what? middle school. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, and then, uh, to surprise enough, he came over on the Friday morning at the small group meeting. And then, uh, you know, just shortly after we uh, greeted each other, we started. He started talking about you know the challenge he's facing, and then uh, we started to use the word to encourage this person. And then I started uh, sharing the gospel with him. And also, uh, in the small group, uh, Ya Song was with us. And there was another lady, uh, a lady from uh, uh, Daniel's high school, uh, you know, a lady who is a mother, of, a mother of a student from Daniel's high school. And Hope uh, you know, uh, got to know her and invited her to come to our small group. And, uh, you know, before she came to the small group, uh, she told other people, Oh, I'm, you know, many people preach the gospel to me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to believe in uh, the gospel. Uh, I don't think I'm ready. But she came to the small group anyway. So, uh, when I was uh, talking to this guy about the gospel, uh, she arrived uh, a little late, and uh, uh, I was trying to, you know, trying to get her to be involved, and uh, I don't want to, her to feel awkward, you know, coming in uh, into an intense conversation about the faith. Uh, but uh, she just um, listened. And then uh, finally, I said to both of them, okay, now would you like to open your heart and repent to Jesus and receive Jesus? And, uh, you know, I, I of course, uh, you know, I know this guy is ready. And uh, I don't know about this lady. Uh, but since, uh, since she was there, uh, it seems to be impolite to only invite the guy and not her. So I said, would you like to also pray with us? Uh, if you want to, pray, let's pray together. And to our surprise, both of them opened their hearts and repent and receive Jesus as their Lord. Hallelujah. And then we were able to have a small group and have two salvation because the newly baptized lady uh, was able to share spontaneously and very naturally with her friend and invited her to come to the small group. And then the funny thing is that this lady who said that she was not ready to receive Jesus, she, uh, she was very interested in uh, getting to know Ya Song. So after a small group, she said she followed Yasong to her shop. And then, uh, and then at that point, 
uh, it dawned on Pastor Ho that oh maybe Ya Song can do one to one with this lady. Right. So she took the one to one and ran to the ran to the shop and gave the one to one to Ya Song and said to Ya Song, put her on the spot and said, would you would you do one to one with her? And Ya Song said, yes. I want to do one to one with her. She was ready uh, because uh, before, uh, just one, just one week before, uh, when Hope was finishing up one to one booklet with Ya Song, uh, she was uh, you know doing the index, which is the you know quote unquote chapter seven of one to one. It's about evangelism, and then uh, at the end of that session, uh, Hope asked Ya Song. So would you like to evangelize people and do one-to-one -one with other people? And Yasuo said, yes. Um, so she didn't realize that uh, even less than a week, she was already doing one-to-one -one with somebody. Just imagine, she was only five days after her baptism, and then she was already doing one-to-one -one with somebody. A total stranger. Yeah. Uh, so I, I shared this story to encourage you that uh, we all have the same experience of uh, really have the passion to, uh, to, to make disciples, to witness to other people, and to lead people to the Lord, and make disciples. We all have that kind of uh, passion. Because when we uh, receive the gift of salvation, we are so blessed and so loved, and, and uh, so much on fire. We can't help but to share with other people about the goodness of Jesus and the gospel. And but over time, sometimes uh, we can just uh, you know growing a little bit cold or even you know backslide a little bit. You know, it's it's. Uh, I would say I'm not you know I'm not saying that you know you're being condemned or anything like that. But it's 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 just normal for everybody. But what do you do about it when you find that you're growing cold and Maybe backsliding a little bit. It's very simple. You just turn to God and say, "God, help me. You know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I've grown cold and I have not been, you know, like my first love. And God, help me rekindle my love for you. Rekindle my love for people so that I can lead people to you. As long as you repent to the Lord, you can be fruitful again. Amen." Especially when we are together, we encourage each other for the good deeds. So to, uh, to, I just want to share this example uh, with you, and uh, uh, and and also uh, encourage you in fruitfulness. Uh, so today we see, we have seen the picture of uh, abiding in Christ presented by chapter fifteen of John. The first picture is the picture of tree of life. The second one is the tree, uh, the second picture is uh, unity. And the third one is sanctification. And the fourth one is fruitfulness. So as we, uh, this is how we are to abide in Christ. And it all takes place through our daily devotion with the Lord. It all takes place from our true connection uh, through receiving His Word and also our prayer to Him. So that's why every time is so basic, it's so fundamental, and we encourage you to do that all the time because this is our lifeline. As long as we can keep the lifeline of devotion, of uh, fellowship with Jesus, we can always abide in Christ. Okay? So, uh, Jesus at uh, John chapter 15 was about to leave the world. But he helped us see that uh, through the Holy Spirit and the church, we can continue to abide in Him. And uh, as we abide in Him, uh, we can continue to bear fruit, and then the Father will receive the glory. 
All right, let's pray together. Father, we draw near you. Jesus, uh, we desire to abide in you and seek to abide in you. Holy Spirit, take us deeper in you. How much we need you. How much we need the word of God. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the truth and the word you are speaking to every one of us today. We pray that you prune our lives, you renew our mind, so that our life can be transformed. To be more like Jesus and to be more fruitful in the name of Jesus. Right now, as um, Vita is going to play the guitar, we want to wait on the Lord and just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, to remind you of the words He's speaking to you today. You can pour your heart in your prayer to Him and cry out to Him. You can say how much I love you or you can repent to Him. Open your heart to receive from Him. Because the uh, Holy Spirit is with us, He's moving in us. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Take us deeper in you. We want to be connected with you, Jesus. We want to abide in you. We want to have more of you. Living water, come to us and give us life. Give us your truth and set us free. Give us your life and life abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to be fruitful for you. To give glory to the Father. Hallelujah. 